Before we get started with the video, I would like to quickly mention that there is a 2024 subscriber decided election form, which in this Google form, you'd be able to fill out who will win each individual swing state based out of a hand-picked bunch of swing states that I have decided to include in this form. A video will be done on these results in the next coming months. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to On Point Politics. And today I'm going to be doing a video basically making the case as to why Donald Trump would theoretically win the 2024 election. What would have to happen? What issues would he prevail on over President Biden? And why I think he could actually get the victory in 2024. If you guys do enjoy the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss another video that I post. Without further ado, let's get into the video. And so you can see here, this right now is my current average um, electoral map based off of my model for the 2024 presidential election that I currently had made a video on. Right now, Trump is at 1.6% leading Biden in the RCP average. The popular world swings 6.1%. The incumbent party approval for the president is minus 17.6. And all of the polling averages are here with the 2016 results and the 2020 result, including the swing from 2016 to 2020. And you have the margins here. Now, again, is this going to be 100% accurate? No, but it is probably going to be somewhat close to what would happen. And what I did is I also had the closest 2020 election results be tested to the machine and some of the states were really close and some weren't so depending on that i had to do a poll miss adjustment to kind of factor that in and i got that miss and added it to all of the states for the 2024 election in this poll now i did update the weighting on some of these now the the polling is 0.85%, the 2016 result weighs 0.95%, and the 2020 result weighs times 1%, and it's divided by 2.75, which ends up getting the new average for all of these states. So some of the states may have changed depending on the weighting average, and Trump has increased his popular vote share on the polling average by like a point, like half a point. So it did add to his margin in some states now nevada actually according to the new adjustments is no longer a likely state as well as ne nebraska no longer being a lean democratic state so this is what the current model is showing which matches my last week's predictions video and first of all from a state-by-state -state basis, Donald Trump lost the 2020 election by 40,000 votes across Georgia, Wisconsin, Arizona. Wisconsin, 20,000 votes. Georgia, 12,000 votes. Arizona, I think it was like 10 or 11,000 votes. If Trump would have won those, he would have gone 269 to 269, tied in the Electoral College, and when it, but it would have been able to prevail in the House of Representatives in the 2021 January 6 approval of the election results. Now, the thing with Trump is that according to his issues page, if you look at these issues, rebuild the greatest economy. He's really hammering on the economy. He's really hammering on fair trade, energy dominance, which is basically um, sticking to fossil fuels and being, um, you know, kind of tied to that, you know, natural energy independence, the energy independence. And on top of that, securing the border, which is going to be a massive issue, war on drug cartels, which is kind of ties in with secure border, stop crime, renew American strength, leadership, reject globalism, care for veterans, protect parent rights and censorship, free and honest and lawful elections, drain the swamp, better health care choices at lower cost, which if he does get a pretty concise plan for this, this could help him in the 2024 election. And if you look at a lot of the polling, a lot of the issues which he was somewhat strong on in 2020, he's leading by double the amount now. And now all the issues that he was weak on or issues that are weak for Republicans, he's basically tied with Biden. He's only leading Biden like two, three percent on abortion and leading Biden on like Medicare and Medicaid by like four percentage points. The only issue that Biden leads him on by a double digit lead is like 12 points is climate change. And that's that was like a 30 point net issue for Biden back then. 
So the fact that he's only leading Trump by 12 in climate change is really bad for him. And a lot of these issues are going to be, you know, very helpful to um, low income white Americans who live in rural areas. And not only that, a lot of African American voters and working class Hispanic voters are definitely seeing these as very popular issues. But the one issue that I believe is going to put Trump over the top in the Electoral College is securing the border and the war on cartels. Not necessarily the war on cartels, but securing the border is going to give Trump the biggest boost. This has reflected in the polling with a lot of the African-American support going to Trump, especially in a lot of times now where, you know, Chicago and New York are accepting immigrants and making shelters in schools for them. And a lot of parents are very, you know, upset about the fact that they're doing this to their schools. The illegal immigrants are filling up streets in Massachusetts. You are now being taught to welcome immigrant families into your home. And I think a lot of voters are not going to appreciate that. And a lot of states that are on the southern border, like Arizona, like Texas, according to the model, are likely states. Funny enough, Arizona is, in fact, a five percentage point win for Donald Trump, according to this model. And I feel like that border issue is being reflected in this current model because the two states that are the most competitive, well, technically two out of the three that are basically touching the border are Texas and Arizona. And New Mexico has, according to the model, gone slightly closer. It is a six point win for Biden, according to this metric. But it does make sense for these states to have inflated margins because of that border issue. And even just in nationally, in general, a lot of voters are, you know, supporting Trump's measure, um, measures for the border as of right now. Even the comment, there is a lot of polling that's coming out saying that that whole vermin comment, like the immigrants are poisoning the blood of the country, that comment in some polls now has 47 percent 46 45 percent approval which is even a lot higher than i would think it would have had and so because of that i think trump is going to be able to very really really you know get that border issue to be his number one issue even more so than the economy because i'm kind of predicting that by the time we get to the election the economy might be just slightly improved now wages won't match prices at all and you know food groceries and certain things still might be high but i think what's really going to be the number one issue for trump is that border issue as well as if you look at the just the general election polling he's ahead nationally by 1.6 percentage points and if you look at the individual states you know for each candidate it is not or at least for trump and biden it is not looking good at all for him if you look at general election the latest poll that came out was a four point lead for trump with him getting over 50 percent by the way he gets over 50 percent i think they actually just got rid of the state by state polling but if you look at texas he's up by eight in texas if we could scroll down here biden only leads trump by 20 in california if you look at let's keep scrolling if you look at georgia he's up by eight points on biden in georgia even General election polls have Trump up by two nationally in this poll. Maine's first district only has Biden up by 16. Maine, he's only up by one. The second congressional district, he's up by 14 points. And so in Michigan, he's up by eight. And so clearly, this is going to be an election where a lot of the polling does not look good for Biden. A lot of the issues that Trump is leading him on, Biden has very bad favorables like immigration and crime and the economy. He has very bad favorables. I actually think his worst issue is immigration, which is why I think that is going to be the issue that puts Trump over the top in the 2024 presidential election. And I kind of want to just do a brief video showcasing the brief analysis as to why if Trump were to win 2024, why it would happen. He also is now out of office and can be viewed as that establishmentarian anti-establishment candidate because he is no longer in the office. In 2020, even though he still is, still was the anti-establishment candidate, he has the facade or the appearance of an establishment candidate because he is the president. So that whole make America great again, I am the anti-establishment doesn't didn't really work because he is the president. 
which in theory would make him the establishment in a, in a political two-way race sense. And I feel like that's why his message didn't hit, pull, really help him pull through in 2024. I also do think that his messaging and the way he carries himself is a lot better compared to 2020. In 2020, in the debates, he seemed more like an angry news Fox, like a more angry Fox News grandpa more than anything, and was very abrasive during speeches. And now he seems way more presidential, calm, cool, collected, especially in that new town hall that Fox just did recently. He seemed very cool, calm, and collected on his election night speech in Iowa. He congratulated all his opponents. And so I think with him carrying that humble sort of personality that I think a lot more people would like to see out of him, plus him leading all the issues and all the polling, I do think that that would be the reason why he would win the 2024 presidential election. And so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you guys did enjoy the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post bell notifications so you don't miss another video that I post. And I'd just like to say I'm very happy that we hit 2,000 subscribers. I saw we finally hit it yesterday, and I'm so excited for the channel to just keep growing and growing as the days go on. And so I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.